Hello guys, my name is Nine and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be building a base based around a simple concept. A super high raid cost, tons of peaks, bedrooms, respawns, everything you're going to need. As many of you know, I haven't been uploading base builds as I really only want to upload the bases I'm truly proud of. And obviously, here one of them is. So without further ado guys, let's get into the cost, upkeep, and everything else with the base design. Alrighty guys, looking at the cost now, we're looking at 59k stones, 74k metal frags, and 339 high qual. But be aware, this base is very well split on our external TCs, so the upkeep is cheap. Obviously guys, if you guys are new to my channel, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. It greatly helps everything that I'm doing here. And without further ado guys, let's get into a tour. Alrighty guys, going on a little tour of the base here. We're going to have four externals on this guy. Two are going to be the same upkeep and the other two will be the same upkeep there. So two will be 1.4k, 1.4k. And then flying over to these other guys here. Of course does that. We're going to be 2k, 1.4k and just a little high qual. This base does have bunkers and a lot of other cool features that I'm really excited to show you guys. As a lot of you guys know, I am not posting basically any more base designs unless I really am happy with them. So this is a base that I personally use myself and I am absolutely in love with it. Turret angles are beautiful, the shotgun traps make it an absolute menace to society and I love it. The amount of patricos and other types of peaks into this compound are beautiful. Every peak has a purpose and I love that. So these modules over here are our bedroom modules. On each side of this we're going to have a bedroom and also a funnel wall type section here. Excuse the doors for bugging out, just a little sanctuary bug. But up into here we have more patricos with more beds. I like to glass one of these off for now, but take, taking them off, we'll have more peaks into the outside of compound when necessary. But this, these peaks are really where the bread and butter is at. Alrighty, going in further, we have these single doors that will lead into more bedrooms with some amazing peaks onto where our furnaces are. This is especially useful if these furnaces are destroyed. It's a full high glitch under anyone standing past it, and I find them absolutely beautiful. This single door is actually what takes us into our starter unit. Our starter unit is paired with a ton of furnaces, boxes, and everything you need, and your main TC for upkeep. 6k, almost 2k stone, and 50 high qual. This base is extremely cheap to upkeep. It is just dirt cheap and blatantly expensive to raid. Going through the single door again, we can still see more of our funnel working at its finest. And we can finally go into our main entrance. So the star unit is entirely partitioned from the main base and that makes everything just much more split and much more expensive to reach. So these modules are what leads us into the main base. Up there is our open core, but down here we have our bunker module. Excuse the ladder for not being placed, but opening with a twig ramp, we have a bunker. This is 16 rockets to reach from any side, two bunkers on this base, 32 rockets just for these bunkers include an open core raid cost and everything else, and it's amazing. I like to put a battery in these guys, and showing here, it is honeycomb from every side. And technically here, honeycomb. You get the idea. Very expensive, very beautiful to raid. Breaking that and coming back up here. Up further will take us up to shooting floor and peaks, but down below here we have an area where we can glass window off our little vault type core boxes. Each of these have four boxes and two boxes above on every side, all partitioned off with a few auto turrets watching this entire area and our tier three workbench. It's very spacious for how small the base is and that's what I really love about it. Also, we do have these peaks into the core. They're really meant to be little sliver peaks for roof. Also, we have retakes on every single single door here. The reason we use single doors is because every side we go on then has a retake up instead of being a double door. This also allows us to forge a much longer door path. See here, this will act as our roof peaks. Isn't really a dead spot on this roof. Kinda hard to peek those, but it's beautiful. Also, yet again, more roof peaks. Jumping up further, we have these little angle peaks that are amazing. Each one watches one of these furnace sections. It's obviously mirrored on the other side, so same peaks there. Jumping up further, we have our auto turrets above us on either side. We have wide gap type modules with using low walls. Little ramp module that also just grants more peaks. 
My favorite peaks on the space are these actually little drop downs that go into here. Each one perfectly watches one of these furnaces here on either side. So if this furnace is destroyed, you just have a beautiful peak onto the furnace. Also, if your body is broken or if you die here, your body rolls right to here and you can literally just come into here. You have full cover here. You can't really be shot from anywhere. You can loot up, hag glitch this with a heavy pot and it's beautiful for killing people on the outside. That is about it for the base design though. So if you guys do have any questions, comments or concerns, make sure to let me know down in the comment section down below. I know it's been a while guys, I've been very sick. So I hope you guys do appreciate and enjoy this base design and I hope it works well for your wipes. So without further ado, let's get into a build guys. Alrighty guys, I know a lot of people like to see the footprint beforehand. So here it is into here is our starter unit this expanded two by one these are our bunker modules these little circles here that i'm kind of highlighting open court loot rooms on these four squares the x peaks as i like to call them on these guys followed by our funnel wall and breach peak modules with tons of particulars our gatehouses entrances into i guess call it our open core along with our externals all right guys be aware I do use a little bit of build grade symmetry and all that stuff to try to speed up the build process, but I won't be going too crazy. So starting off in a one square area, I am going to start with our starter unit. This is all we need. Placing our TC in either corner. Today I'll be doing it in the right corner. Excuse it for being out of different skin, but obviously we want to keep expanding. Coming out another square, three triangles, walling in one side, and adding another double door, and another double door frame. I'll usually move my double door like this to be better, followed by adding a shelving unit in here. And now I will start adding my boxes as fast as humanly possible. The starter is meant to be just a starter unit. The raid cost on it isn't crazy but it's just meant to be obviously early game storage and all that so i'm not too worried about it i guess being cheap in a way there are a few cheaper quote unquote ways to raid this starter but i'm never really worried about them placing the last few boxes in here we are good to go this main base really gets all of its raid costs from the bunkers and the open core the open core is surprisingly very expensive to get all loot from and that's really not what i'm banking on but what i've kind of relied on a lot in recent days for me playing my wipes myself continuing out another two triangles we can add our basic airlock and that is it that is our starting it that is done that is good to go at this point, we're gonna start building a lot, so make sure you have some resources ready to go. Also, I'll be turning on symmetry to speed up and finalize a lot of the footprint. So coming to these sides here, I wanna add a square off of each triangle like this. On this middle one, we we'll are making a module like this, and on these guys, modules like this. These are gonna be bedroom modules. But more importantly, if you need to keep expanding quickly, this is a great thing to do to grab another glass window off and keep going. And I'll actually add the proper embrasures on these guys, even though this one I like to leave glass windowed for now because that's our main entrance. Now we're gonna need to make an external this way to complete this wide gap type foundation. But first I'm just gonna add the last foundation here. One more triangle and then on your left side, it really doesn't matter which side you're gonna do here, but for our sake, we'll do it on the right side. These two foundations will be the last two foundations that you need. Do not honeycomb this, leave it as is, as the bunker will be right here. Alrighty, time for the first external. Now the buildup for this guy is a little weirder than you might be used to, so bear with me. It's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares out. It's not nine square, it's not 10 square, it's a weird build out. We're going to come back with only triangles. Oop, I believe one, one too many. And this is about the gap we should be with. So the last one we came back with was a square. 
but technically speaking, I want to come back with triangle. So I'm going to do a square just a little sooner than that, like this, and we're going to be met with this. This is perfect. I can now remove everything on the outside. Place this square and this square, and to test my footprint, I'll place these three triangles to get this gap right here. This looks perfect, so we're good to go. Three triangles like this, we're good to go. I'm gonna raise this triangle and make four squares off for our external. Let me switch to normal skins. And obviously I'm kind of doing this in the slowest method possible, just to make sure you guys know how to do this external. This is the way I like to do mine, last window. Switch back to stone, because why not? Garage door single door. And we'll break this connection. Add a full wall here, sheet metal, sheet metal. Temporary, call this twig temporaries for the sheet metal connection. Then break this to show the disconnectable works. Good to go. Perfect, we're working, that's all I care about. Those are our basic externals. Sometimes it doesn't want to replace, and if it doesn't, add a temporary and do that. And it should work perfectly fine. Also, make sure to upgrade your roof to sheet metal and the back walls on each side to sheet metal as well. Sorry about that, I'd like to upgrade those early. Coming down here, we're going to sheet metal, sheet metal, stone, 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 sheet metal, sheet metal. We're going to add our half walls in here fall by windows and then we can add these two walls on every side I actually like to put these bedrooms fully up early game as they're gonna act just as early game bedrooms at that point why not and they don't cost much more continuing through here I'm also gonna add my metal barricades early as humanly possible This is the section practically taken care of. Now I'm gonna add these floor frames in here. You'll see why these are useful later. And then these triangles here. I'm gonna upgrade these to a funny building skin though, because I like the conditional better. And it makes it harder for people to kind of use this as a jump up. This gives us some basic peaks out of compound and everything that we'll have and we will have. So let's continue on through building the base. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is build our externals on the next side. We wanna rush a compound on the space as cooking a lot of resources is obviously very good. Three triangles and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Place a triangle and break our build out. I'm gonna leave that triangle there for making sure I have the right build. There you go, yeah. One more square, triangle, triangle triangle, square triangle, there we go. Break our build out. This is what we should be left with. If it's working, you should not be able to place these triangles, just like I'm not able to now. That means we're good. That looks perfect. Upgrade these foundations to sheet metal like this, and then enclose this as a bunker, just like that. Place our wall here. Place our bunker wall here. You're gonna see here there's a little gap here. A twig now i'm gonna make this this is the opening for the bunker here place a triangle floor frame like this while the bunker is open so it covers that top gap followed by coming up here placing two triangles looks perfect that's what we want excuse me for not making the external first a little brain lag today been very sick Continuing through with a basic external, the same thing that I'm doing. Obviously, use bunkered externals if you can, if you know how to do them. I don't like teaching them here as they are more complex and the raid cost we're getting out of them is only for those long and monthly type players. I don't want to confuse any of you guys. Alright, coming through here now, we can add our connection. Looks perfect. Half falls on top of these guys. 
sealing this in. Looks pretty darn good. Glass windows there. One more double door is all you need for now. And now we're ready to place the compound. The reason we're rushing a compound so heavily on the space design compared to some of the other ones I've built in the past is it just is really nice to have large furnaces up for such a small base as you don't want to be wasting your resources on stoning an open core. And with that being said, your sheet metal should be going to things like basically just upgrading around and then obviously picking probably these back walls through here now and high calling them. Also rushing these early game bunkers, you can chuck loot in here super early game and it's just going to annoy the crap out of early game raiders and make them hate you and I kind of love that. Also coming into the bunker now, let's go ahead and add everything that needs to be in here. And realistically, it's just two boxes and two batteries. Maybe wondering why I'm doing batteries in my bunkers. I like to do them in here as I don't need as much space as some people do in their bunkers. I don't put everything in them. I put a good amount. I put like a good third in each bunker and leave a third out to make it look believable. And then I look to put batteries in here as most expensive thing to hit or most useful thing to never have get hit as I don't want to lose those. They are literally make or break it in raids. Alrighty. Sorry for rambling so much, but here we are placing our wood walls on these corners, basically straight out, and then cornering them back in. Straight out again, cornering it back in. Boom, cool. That looks pretty darn perfect. Not bad at all. Coming into here, we can place two single doors, two half walls, and then we're going to add one more and seal this guy like this. Looks good. Sorry, I'm just thinking through everything in my head. I don't want to mess anything up as it's been a while. Now, straight off from these guys, I want to place these raised furnaces. Basically stand in a single door frame and push them as far back as possible. You should be left with a gap like this that you should be able to walk around if you do it right. I messed it up just slightly here. So let's try to get a little more right where I can get around this gap. Eventually we're going to want to honeycomb this section just like this, which I'll do now. Along with adding these next sheet metal walls, going higher. Doing this on both sides. So make sure to do it a little bit to the right, or left, sorry, dyslexic. And that's perfect. Followed by making our patricos like this. Also a great spot to add shotgun traps. Early game can be very dangerous. Other places I love for shotgun traps are off of these sections. This little honeycomb piece as it's going to force them to peek it. If they're coming around this way, they're then obviously not going to be able to deal with this shotgun trap very easily, but this guy could get a little annoying. I do like doing those little funny things. Sheet metal in these two foundations. Those will be the buildups for the next section, but for now let's make the open core. Coming into the interior, hopefully you're using those large furnaces and whatever you can to build out of sheet metal instead of anything else. And one high on this section for now. Coming into here, let's place ramps. And now add shelves in the middle. Like so. For adding windows two half walls like this and one in the middle. I'm leaving all the space underneath for drop boxes, but more importantly, to be able to glass window these guys from below. And placing these boxes also. Why not? Well, I have a second. Doesn't need to be perfect. With these guys, it's better to do them kind of far back, but not too far back where they're annoying to grab. And that's the best way to describe it. You don't want to annoy yourself when grabbing your own loot. But that looks pretty good. Locking these boxes also can annoy the absolute heck out of raiders. Because if the loot drops down there, they're just not going to be able to get it very easily. Alright, adding ramps. Two double door frames like this. Window frame this through the middle. A window like this. And then sealing off these guys. 
On this section here, it's a little bit different, but we're just gonna use a half wall instead of a full wall. So make sure to use a half wall here. Auto turrets here. Let's continue building out over to here. One half wall right here, followed by another half wall up to the next section. Any place you can place a double door frame will work great. And then just continuing through by expanding our door path. No point doing this here. Windows. I don't think we need it. We do want another half wall, do we? Oh. Lovely. I'm at a little brand night today. Not, not fun. All right, I see what I gotta do. All right, half wall on this section here. Jumping up higher, one more half wall, and finally sealing off this section. Another window. Roof triangles for that roof turret pod, like this. And we'll go back over the entire section now, so it makes a little more sense. This is what it looks like from the outside right now, to kind of give you an idea. Place the proper embrasures. Coming onto the interior, here's what it's gonna look like. Also, furnace jump up here, two single doors, we're good to go. You can also add a shelving unit here. Coming down to the left is our bunker. Adding a ladder here is the easiest way to get out. Double door frames throughout everything you can. Half walls here, rotate how I have them. And then just double door frames throughout. I believe we actually want to do a half wall right here. So basically the exact same thing we're doing down here, but up here, like this. And that looks perfect. Apologies for the inconvenience there. That's entirely my fault. It does get a little difficult building here nowadays. Alrighty, one full wall. In between here, we're gonna place a floor like this. Coming up here, heading frame, two more windows, and then coming below and placing roof tiles through the thing. This will make sense in a second, as up here. Also, I do suggest using a building skin for these guys if you have it. Become these funny little peak modules. Yep, I'm right in that. This is what it looks like from the outside. Basically, we're leaving this section below as well. And you can even wall this in then, like that. So it's no use of, or no waste of space. Basically we're doing this square in between the full wall so it has a socket to connect to. And that works crazy perfect. Single doors down here. And then build sheet metal, three high for the sheen floor. These are for little mini wide gap type peaks. And the reason I say type peaks is because they're not technically wide gaps and we're using low walls to give us the peak. Which is arguably pretty weird, but it gives a cool peak. Yeah, I love it. Triangles off these sections. As you can see, the roof is taking amazing shape at this point. All we have left is to do the last compound module that's gonna house more of our turrets. Also, if you haven't already, these are kind of early game turret locations. That will obviously help a lot with defense. All right, three half walls in here. Windows, triangles like this. Rotate these embrasures like this. Or backwards, I'd like to say. And now come in here and seal this off. Now, if you have the BP, I do suggest really getting it on servers, as if you place a triangle floor grill here. Right here, right now, you can't place a bed here, but if you place a triangle floor grill, you can place a bed on top of it. And this makes for an amazing use of space. Just like that. 
That is perfect. Looking good. Coming down here. Bed. Locker. Bed. Locker. I'm dyslexic. I did that backwards. <laughs> it's okay. Embrasure's on here. Embrasure. Locker. Bed. Double door. Coming to these guys as well. Locker. Bed. Take this off temporarily. Locker. Bed. You might suggest leaving this one out here to make it easier to get a core. So you're not making this jump every time. Just a suggestion though. Upgrading these foundations, because why not? You'll have the resources. And upgrading those walls, and these guys especially, are very, very important. Next, we add a pretty simple yet effective turret pod. That's pretty weird. It's just on top of here. The other, there are alternate ways of doing this, but it kind of exposes it to the outside if you see here. And I say wall this, but that just, it doesn't give the same feeling and it wastes a lot of cost. So I just prefer a turret just like this. And that calls it. As this turret does watch the angle I need it to watch, which is this. It really needs to just watch below here, which is perfectly what it does. Alright, next. Building this guy too high, followed by a triangle floor frame, and a frame like that. This is to make it so raid bases can't shoot you like this from far. It blocks your feet, so it's harder for someone on height to see you. Really unique concept that works absolutely amazingly, and I'm kind of weird that the more people aren't using it. It just is super effective. Same with little rotation modules like this guy. These things just go crazy. And this is supposed to be a single door. There we go. Perfect. It's supposed to be a single door as well. Yeah, it is. It's okay. If those are half walls, don't worry about it. It's not going to affect the rate cost of this. Just one less door. Apologies, guys. One double door frame, one roof tile. Actually, sorry. Half wall. And a roof tile. Like that. I'll give you that peek. Looks perfect. Last thing I do is make our windmill spots. I personally have four locations for windmills in this base. And they're simply put off these guys. Like this. I usually use a lot of power. When I play solo duo type beat, and this is what this base is really for. Even though I'm probably going to call it a small group base, as I assume most people using a base this size will be small group. But in reality, you can do this thing as a duo. I see no reason not. It might be too close here. Funny, funny, funny. Do it the old fashioned way. Why not? What do we got to lose? That will work perfectly. That about does it for the base. Let's go over last minute upgrades, things that I need to talk about. These bedroom modules are extremely advantageous to sheet metal. Even just the side, just like how I've done here, is amazing. Next thing to do is to sheet metal these guys. Reason I suggest doing it is it's a turret pod. Might as well make it expensive and annoy the raiders. Next thing to talk about is these modules here as sheet metal are going to raise the raid cost a good chunk. Every slot that you see should get doors, pretty obviously, but I know gears can be difficult. Coming into our starter unit, everything gets sheet metal realistically, except for the roof getting high qual fully. Make sure to replace your doors with armored ones and do the best you can. If you have an armored door, this is the best spot for it. And high qualling this wall, and this wall will give you the raid cost you're looking for. This is all that needs to be high quality in this starter. Nothing else really needs it. Coming into the bunker, however, we're going to come above it, high quality these three tiles, this tile, and then simply sheet metal these honeycomb pieces and you have a 16 rocket bunker. 
Those are two 16 rocket bunkers now. They are perfect. I also do so just high qual on one foundation. And if there is one more foundation to high qual, it's going to be this guy. As this one has nothing else to connect to, you'll have to remove this furnace to replace. Alrighty. Okay, and everything else. Sheet metal, this turret pod angle yet again. This turret pod deserves sheet metal. Coming into the open core. Make sure, ooh, almost, almost forgetting. Any machine placements, just like that. I was placed a tier three on the other side, an embrasure to cut the noise. You can access them through the corners. Great for flexing, and then boxes above. I do apologize for being gone for so long. And if you guys do have any other questions, comments, concerns, anything about the base, please comment down below. Or if you just liked it or liked the concept or the idea of it, just let me know. I've been enjoying living out of bases kind of like this one. A lot recently and I don't know I just find it fun to more enjoy the game so yeah if you guys have any other questions comments concerns anything please let me know down below I am more than happy to talk to you guys I love talking to you guys and join the discord if you haven't already alrighty guys without further ado my name is nine and I will see you in the next one love you all